All right, uh, fellow hell diver enjoyers, welcome. Um, just coming at you with this PSA to let you know this uh, this airburst rocket launcher. It's even after the fix, it's still fucking terrible. <laughs> What you're seeing right now is a solo hell dive that I'll typically do, but occasionally I'll throw up some previous testing footage all the same. Now I know some people have been saying things about this weapon, with the two most prominent ones being that this weapon is an airburst weapon, so it's meant to be shot at targets in the air. And people have also been saying that this weapon is meant to be shot near targets and not directly at them. Now, for those saying that it is an airburst weapon and should be shot at targets in the air accordingly, I'd like to point out that this isn't the reality of handheld airburst weapons. You see, airburst doesn't explicitly mean anti-air, and in fact, all airburst really means is that it explodes in the air before it hits something. How the munition decides when to explode is a big point of contention that I have, which we'll probably touch upon a little bit later. As for those saying that this weapon is meant to be shot near targets and not directly at them, there is a very good reason why I was shooting directly at the target and not near them like one would expect. In previous testing, I shot around above groups of enemies and shot around directly at them. When I first used this weapon, well before I made a video on it, it shooting directly at enemies was more consistent, and that still seems to be the case. Shooting above enemies has been, uh, mixed. It seems like when it explodes directly above them, the scattered bombs hit well at the epicenter, uh, have a weird damage fall off for a few meters or so beyond that, and then a damage gain again as the bomblets continue to spread. A lot more enemies you'd expect to die tend to survive when you shoot this thing above or near them rather than directly at them. Throughout history, and even now, airburst rounds have been used for primarily unarmored ground targets. Uh, airburst doesn't mean anti-air exactly, but it's still odd that in Helldivers, uh, this is taken to the complete opposite uh, with where the weapon is best shot. Shooting it above even unarmored and lightly armored enemies just isn't as consistent as shooting it directly at the center of the group, or sometimes even at the very front of the group. The funny thing about this though is that you're far more likely to blow yourself up using it this way than if you just tried shooting it above the intended target. Now this is typically not how most airburst weapons are used, but it's still bizarre that this weapon, which is most effectively shot directly towards the enemy, is also the more dangerous way to use it. This honestly it feels like a symptom of two things, the detonation being completely uncontrolled, and the weapon throwing out a cluster of bomblets instead of just sending out fragmentation from the point of explosion like it should. To sort of emphasize on the detonation, these rounds are typically controlled by remote detonation or a set distance by the user where the round explodes after rotating a set amount of times. In Helldivers 2, it's simply fire and forget. With not even a minimum safe arming distance, which even airburst rounds tend to have. This is definitely not how handheld airburst weaponry functions. While the other explosive support weapons don't have minimum safe arming distances, bar the grenade launcher, which despite having a belt of GL rounds seems to just shoot out handheld grenades on a short fuse, uh, the airburst rocket launcher in particular is offensive simply due to how sporadic the fragmentation actually is. I guess one of the nice things that came out of the balance patch was it no longer detects a blade of grass and blows up in your face, or catches the faintest sniff of another Helldiver and decides to explode. This makes it a little better at simulating how real-life airburst rounds work from handheld weapons, but at that rate, why not just make the weapon function like real handheld airburst weapons do? But I digress. Despite having to add this one to the list of weapons Arrowhead don't quite understand, it's a rather weak pick logistically as well. Being a team reload weapon, you're caught between sitting in place and reloading it for longer than it takes to heal with Estus and Dark Souls 2, or convincing another bozo to forego a shield pack or supply pack to keep you topped off quick. Combine that with some of the finicky area of effect stuff I mentioned earlier and it really makes this one a tough sell for a support weapon. Not to mention, it's just redundant 
uh, like a lot of the weapons in this game, why use this when a cluster bomb or an orbital airburst can do the same thing but better? Because you need to get rid of a group of enemies immediately? The only time you realistically need to get rid of a group of enemies immediately is if they're right on top of you and about to kill you, uh, which wouldn't even be a good distance to shoot the thing at anyways. It's nothing a cluster bomb, airburst strike, flamethrower, machine gun, or even some well-placed grenades can't already do. As for uh, Shriekers, the only real unarmored aerial enemies in the game, they never, never ever cluster up like in that demonstration video, and even if they did, an incendiary breaker or a similar enough weapon could deal with them just fine. Now the nerd ramble that I kind of did on how airburst weapons work wasn't just for fluff or to flex some sort of knowledge. I genuinely believe that it could really help how this weapon works. Making it remotely detonated could do a number for this weapon's usage, and make it at least a little more true to form with the real handheld airburst weapons. Not to mention, it would be pretty cool to have a rocket that we can fire and detonate ourselves. But as for situations where you'd realistically want to bring this thing, uh, um, yeah, we, we should have gone for the AT mines. <laughs> you can expect some less serious stuff from me in the near future, uh, maybe even non-Helldivers 2 stuff. I mean, Death Must Die has been a blast, and Thrones of Decay for Warhammer 3 just dropped and it looks gorgeous. Even Mordhow, of all things, is coming back with a PvE Demon Horde mode for its 5th anniversary. Uh, but with that being said, uh, thanks for stopping by and listening to my PSA-turned-ramble.